Hi, I'm Neil Gittleman, conductor of the Dayton Philharmonic Orchestra. Thanks for being part of our Mass Community Choir for the DPO's June Masterworks concert. Um, this is one of several videos I'm creating um, to help people learn the music for the concert. I know in the choir we have a mix of people who read music and people who learn by ear, and so this can be useful certainly for the second group and possibly even for the first group as well. This video is about uh, the opening piece that we are performing, Rosephany Powell's Ascribe to the Lord. Uh, you will quickly find that I'm not a great singer and even a worse pianist, but I will do my best to be helpful in these videos. So the piece begins uh, with uh, two bars of orchestra, and then the tenors and basses come in. One, two, three, four. Ascribe to the Lord, a mighty ones. Ascribe to the Lord, glorious After the tenors and basses have sung that, everyone sings exactly the same thing. So the sopranos and altos join in. So the tenors and basses have finished. In the splendor of his holiness, worship him. One, two, three, four. Ascribe to the Lord, almighty ones. Ascribe to the Lord, glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord, the split off into parts, beginning with the Sopranos, who just finished in the splendor of his holiness, worship him, three, four, ascribe to the Lord, the glory to his name, in the splendor of his holiness, worship him, and then the same thing again, second time, ascribe to the Lord, the glory to his name, in the splendor of his holiness, worship him. So the first time it's worship him, ascribe, and then on the repeat, worship him, all the way to the downbeat of the next bar. The altos begin that passage with the sopranos. Altos you just finished with everyone. In the splendor of his holiness, worship him. And then you start with the sopranos. second time when you repeat all the way to the downbeat of the next bar. On to the tenors and basses after that unison passage ends, starting with the tenors. So you finish the unison, in the splendor of his holiness, worship him, and then the sopranos and altos begin, ascribe to the Lord, the glory in the splendor of his holiness, worship And the words are a little tricky because you start two beats after the sopranos and altos, so you have to squeeze the words together to catch up. So it's ascribe to the Lord the glory in the splendor of his holiness. So you never say glory of his name. So once again, here's the tenor part. I'll start with the um, the leading voice in the sopranos and altos. Ascribe to the Lord the glory in the splendor of his holiness, worship him. Ascribe to the Lord the glory in the splendor of his holiness, worship him. And I ran out of breath, but you won't. Basses, you will start with the tenors on that, and then your part just splits off. So you finished the unison statement of the melody that everybody sings. In the splendor of his holiness, worship him. Sopranos and altos start. Ascribe to the Lord the glory in the splendor of his holiness, worship him. Ascribe to the Lord the glory in the splendor of his holiness, worship him. And that's how that opening 
beginning section goes. Then the middle section of the piece gets a little bit complicated, um, but there's a lot of repeating, so it works. Um, it starts with the sopranos, and the sopranos sing the same pattern five times, and it goes like this. I'll sing it an octave below. One, two, three, four. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. And you sing that five times in a row. For the altos, you come in after the sopranos have sung that pattern once. So the sopranos sing by themselves. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. And then, then you come in, the voice, that's your note. So the sopranos start. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. Once again, your part. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. And with the sopranos, it sounds like this. again. So the sopranos have, are repeating their pattern five times. You come in on the second time, so altos sing that pattern four times in a row. So for the tenors, you're next. So sopranos sing by themselves, then the sopranos and altos sing their pattern, and you come in tenors on the third time. And they have been singing... comes in and your part goes like this. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. Once again. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. Which will sound like this with the sopranos and altos. Once again. The voice of the Lord is over the And so sopranos sing their, their thing five times. Altos come in the second time, sing it four times. Tenors come in the third time, so you sing it only three times. And then the basses. You will come in on the fourth time through. So you've just heard those three parts. <laughs> Your note is the voice, the voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. Once again, the voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. And then you repeat, except the first note is different. You start off on the same C that you finish. So the first bass entrance is the voice. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. Then the same note, the second time. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. And that's the first part of that section. So after we've done that sequence, sopranos five times, altos entering second time, doing it four times, tenors entering the third time, doing it three times, basses entering the fourth time, doing it twice. Then we go into unison. Then we start off in unison and break into parts. Sopranos. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. Once again. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord back and we repeat that whole the voice of the Lord is over the waters section. So let me do the sopranos one more time so you can see how that transition begins because of course you kick off the repeat of the voice of the Lord is over the waters. So this is we begin in unison. The voice of the Lord is etc. 
altos, you come in an octave below the sopranos for this refrain. The voice of the moon is beautiful. The voice of the moon is majestic. One more time. The voice of the moon is beautiful. The voice of the moon is majestic. And then the sopranos. And then you can etc. as we re repeat that pattern. For the tenors coming out of the God of Glory Thunders, you sing the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. One more time. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. And as you hear, the voice of your conductor is not majestic. And then after you've sung that, the sopranos sing the voice of the Lord is over the waters, then the altos, and then you come in. And basses, you're in the unison passage down here. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. Once again. The voice of the Lord. repeat that section, the voice of the Lord is over the waters, and when we finish, we go back to ascribe to the Lord with the sopranos and altos going first. So we finish that second time through, the God of glory thunders, and then sopranos and altos, ascribe to the Lord, the glory of his name, in the book of the Lord, in his special name. The same thing as before. Sopranos, ascribe to the Lord, the glory of his name, in the splendor of his holiness, worship him. Repeat, ascribe to the Lord, the glory of his name, in the splendor of his holiness, worship him. And then we're at the finishing section. So I'll go back to catch the altos, just like before. Ascribe to the Lord, the glory of his name, in the Uh, tenors, just like we did before, you come in two beats after the sopranos and the, and the altos, so you finish. God of glory thunders, ascribe to the Lord, the glory in the splendor of his holiness, worship him. Ascribe to the Lord, the glory in the splendor of his holiness, worship him. And then we're at the, the wrap up. And lastly, basses, you just finished. And when we get to that worship hymn, we're at the finish, and the pattern is the same for everyone. Worship him off, worship him off, worship him, worship. So there's a rest the first two times, and then the third time it connects to worship, and then there's a hymn at the end. So here's the sopranos. I'll get, I'll pick you up at Splendor of His Holiness, the soprano part. In the splendor of His Holiness, worship him off, worship him off. Worship him, worship to three. Him. So that last measure is worship to three. Him on four. Worship him. Once again, sopranos. In the splendor of his holiness, worship him off. Worship him off. Worship him, worship him. Altos. You're coming off, and it's the same rhythmic pattern. You're coming off in the splendor of his holiness. In the splendor of his holiness, worship him off. Worship him off. Worship him. Worship him. So the last 
last notes are two, three. So it comes out. So once again, altos. Not fun hearing me sing way up there, I know. Um, tenors, the ending, is coming again from In the Splendor of His Holiness. In the splendor of His Holiness, worship Him, worship Him. So the only trick is at the end. So it's worship in three times. Worship. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. And the basses. In the splendor of his holiness. Worship him. Off. Worship him. So that last bar with all the parts sounds like this. So you finish on this dissonant chord, but with the orchestra, it kind of sounds constant, like that. So that is ascribed to the Lord. There's a link to a an okay performance of uh, the piece, a YouTube video um, with piano, so you can at least see continuously how the piece goes without all the starts and stops that we did here. Once again, thank you so much for participating in this concert, and I hope this little tutorial video is helpful.